everybody. How is everybody? Is everybody good? Are we good? Hi, you guys. Oh my God. Lavender. Oh, it's kind of blue, but it looks, yeah. This is Vanessa's bra, so it matches my shirt and it matches my glasses. So, you know, I'm super happy about that. Super happy. Hi. Oh, see, Auntie. Somebody calls me Auntie. At least somebody calls me, right? Okay, so how is everybody? Hi, you guys. Oh my God, I have the funniest stories to tell you. Oh, I should do a makeup. Well, this isn't, you know, I was at the sauna today, um, the infrared sauna, and I did the lymphatic massage and the chiropractor. It's like on one day in the acupuncture. I do it once a month so that uh, I'm, I don't know, whatever. I'm thinking, I told my acupuncture deep, I said, hey, make me calmer. <laughs> stuck it right in my forehead. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty calm. <laughs> and then stuck it in my hands. Um, I'm like, make it calm, make me calm. Cause there's so many annoying people. Hello from Michigan. Yes. Wait, love you. It's sh wait, share. Oh, hi. How are you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is my dream is telling me not to worry. Oh yeah. I, well, I don't know where I was in my dreams last night. We have so much astrological stuff coming up, but I have to tell you hilarious story first. I have to tell you a funny story. Okay, so you guys on my channel know, no matter what, I'm completely honest with you. Like I'm public about everything. I was public about my separation, really public about Keith's death and really public about the assholes I met after Keith's passing, family members that treated me like, you know, whatever, and just were not kind. So I was very, I'm very open about it. I'll say anything, I'll say it anywhere, but here's the funny thing. When you guys, I don't know if you guys have had this experience, but when you live in a relationship that's whatever, whether it be a friend, a lover, a relative, it doesn't matter, and you start telling your true stories about them, they don't fucking like it. When you start telling the true stories about them, they don't like it. They hate it. They get so angry. But if you get that angry at what I did and you can't take accountability for what you did because it's a true story, then like, where's your responsibility in it? Where's your responsibility in it? So they're fucking, their little panties are in a wad. It's hilarious. Um, <laughs> no, it's a funny story. I'm just saying when somebody does shitty things to you, shitty things, right? They don't, they don't like it when you repeat it. But here's a clue, even if it's 30 years ago and I'm a young girl and you wanna fuck with me, then I'm gonna fuck with you back later on because I'm gonna tell the story of the um, just the fuckery that you did and I'm never gonna back down, sorry. If you don't like it, come to my front door and do something about it, right? Anyway, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, they're pissed because, no, they're pissed, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold it in anymore. My son died, what do you want me to, pretend we had a good family, we had a shit family. I mean, we had an okay family, but there were people in the family that did things, which is why I said it. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just fucking saying, just saying, right? I'm like, if you're going to give me like a garter belt, underwear and panties and tell me I can wear them to bed with your dad, I'm going to fucking mention that because you a fucking asshole. You're an asshole. You're an asshole. So you're an asshole. Yeah. And if you didn't say that, then you have nothing to worry about. Yeah, no, seriously. I was just 22. I think I would turned 22 in August and this would have been Christmas. I mentioned it in my other videos, but I was laughing because I'm like, why are they so mad? Oh, they saw the video. Oh, they saw the video. Well, then don't fucking think you stupid, uneducated, whatever, that you're going to do that and put me on a hot seat there. And I'm not going to talk about it. I mean, you just don't get to do that to me and I'm not going to talk about it. We should all speak about our stories. So yeah. Oh, I know they, they hate it. It's funny. I just, I just had this conversation. Anyway, I was going to say like, if you, here's the thing, young ladies, young ladies out there and young men, if your daddy, if your daddy likes to fuck people your age, this is just, I'm going to start it. If your daddy wants to fuck a girl, your own age. So daddy want to fuck somebody your age? Daddy wrong? Daddy wrong. Daddy got problems. Daddy's got problems, okay? The young girl's not the one you target, dummy. You target daddy. 
because daddy got the problems. He's bringing the young girl in. She ain't your problem. Daddy who wants to date young girl, your problem. So go after daddy, baby. Go, go after your daddy. Take it up with him. Daddy is a sicko. And I'm just saying, I mean, don't fucking yell at me. I'm 20 years younger, 20 and a half years younger. Like, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, it's, if anything, I didn't have the family. I didn't, I don't bring 30 year olds into my house and then introduce them to Jason so Jason can go bananas on them. No, it's predatory. Oh my God, daddy's predatory. Obviously you want to groom and train a fucking young girl. But if you listen to daddy, daddy says, oh my God. Yeah, daddy got some issues. Of course, why would you date someone your daughter's age younger? By my, why, why, why am I to blame for that? I know my childhood. I know where I came from. So what are you doing? What, why are you not responsible for that? I would, I, I, like, I had no fucking idea, but I did have an idea. <laughs> daddy needs a slap in the face. Well, I had kids with him and everything, but what daddy needed to do is when his daughter started attacking the young girl younger than her, daddy needed to say, why don't you fucking act like a human being and stop being a pig to the guest at our dinner table that I moved into our house? Why don't you stop being a pig? Don't be a pig. Don't be a misogynistic female. How about that? Can you not do that? That's what daddy should have fucking said. But no, no, no. Daddy didn't say that. Daddy said, oh, I, I talked to her when you weren't around. Anytime a man fucking says that, he ain't doing shit and he's setting you up behind the scenes. Oh, and here's another thing, daddy. Since we're talking daddy. Oh, daddy. Okay. So anyway, um, you're not the only one that paid bills for 35 years. I, no, yeah, zero home training. Totally predatory. This person, who shall remain nameless, seems to believe that her daddy paid all the bills in 35 years. I did nothing. Nothing. Not one thing. What did I do? Nothing. I pushed out two humans. And if that's all I did, then that's what I did. But I did pay bills. So we're very fucking clear. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. I don't know. John hates women. I don't know why he married me. He doesn't even like me. Anyway, he's got a hold of my Jason, so that's good. Um, yeah, your other head. <laughs> oh, my God, Teresa, I got your gift. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. I got your gift. I got the shoes. I love them. I got the, well, the skirt, you know, I got, and I got Lila's little cards. Anyway, yeah, no, totally chaos causing. Who brings somebody their daughter's age into their fucking house and says they love them. Why do you love them? Because you can control them. You can't control me anymore. I'm not 20. I'm not 20. Not 20. And ladies, don't marry with an age difference because there's usually an imbalance of power, whether the man wants to think so. Of course, that man said that I was more worldly than him at 20. That actually came out of his mouth. He said, you're more worldly than me. I'm like, really? Really, Mr. 42-year-old, when I met you, was I more worldly than you? What was I? Even if I was a prostitute on the street sucking dick, I'm still not educated because I'm coming out of trauma. So like, no, no, not buying it. No, eat your bullshit back. No, no. Um, anyway, <laughs> and they've been watching this. So I hope that this is appealing to you because here's another thing. Well, men like younger. They don't, you know, whatever. But it's, it's funny because men get older and they look ugly when they're older, but they critique women. Like, you think you look good at fucking 70? Do you think you look good at 50? Like, you look the same as women look at 50. You got a pot belly or whatever you got. Maybe you're missing your hair. Maybe you're just stupid. I don't know. I'm talking about all, I was 20, he was 47. He had a son. There you go. There you go. Boom. Control issues. So, uh, let's name it. <laughs> um, no, I'm not naming anybody because you know why? Because, uh, because, because I, I may be hurting their feelings. Here's the thing. You fucked with me. My son died and you fucked with me after that. So I'm not going to stop. But if I'm speaking my true life story, if I'm speaking, this, this is the thing with abusive people. This is the thing with people who abuse other people. And by no means am I saying I was a good mother and not abusive to my kids. I've acknowledged it publicly that I was completely insane, having nervous breakdowns, screaming at everybody and throwing things, punching, slapping and kicking all the way through my marriage, punching, slapping and kicking every fucking day through my marriage, trying to get that P 
pinhead to hear me. Now, I didn't understand that the pinhead was invested in not hearing me, like his pinhead family members who are invested in thinking that I paid no bills. Here's a note. If you're going to marry somebody with a lot of money, which I didn't, I'm, I, John was fine. He had a lot, he had enough money. He's, that's not what I'm talking about. But if somebody else is going to marry somebody for money and they don't actually have a job and pay their own bills, I don't think they should be critiquing me after 35 years. I'm just saying, maybe you should get a job. Maybe you should move out and maybe you should pay your own fucking bills. Yeah. Peace, bro. Peace. Anyway, there's this whole thing when you talk about what you've experienced in your life, like, um, I did, yeah, I did, I did, I would never get married again. I would never fucking get married again. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, here's the thing. If you are going to talk about your life experience, like I talk about what I found on the road when Keith died, what I saw, nobody can really sue me for that because it's actually the truth. So like, if you actually gave me a garter belt panties and a fucking bra when you were older than me and said, and I repeat, you can wear this to bed with my dad. Okay, it makes me wonder how you fucking know what your dad likes a woman to wear in bed. Are you just being a sniping see you next Tuesday like a sniping bitch? Or did you see something you shouldn't have? Or were you made to wear that to go to bed you know, like, why would you say that? Oh, it's creepy as fuck. She said it. So um, she said it. She fucking said it. I'm going back 30 years. It's pissed me off for 30 years because nobody said, don't speak to her like that. I moved her in here. She deserves respect. You get out. No one said that. So no, I'm divorcing him. We're going to sign those divorce papers no matter what. It does sound weird. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know if she saw it. I don't know if her mother put her up to it. I don't know if she knew about it because she saw, you know, his mistress. I don't know. 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 But they don't like me talking about it. Oh, <laughs> mm. too bad. Too bad because it's my life experience and I fucking didn't speak about it for years. So grow. I know. <laughs> I know it's pretty funny. Anyway, we're on this topic again. We are on this topic. Every day I get a call about this fucking topic. So there you go. You have to be married 10 years to get his. So yeah, I've been married 35. 35. And his family members think I did nothing. I did nothing. I did nothing. I did nothing. Hello. I birthed two children. I watched your mother because she lived in our house. I fed your mother. Yes, your mother babysat my kids while I went to work or the gym. And there was daycare at the gym, which Keith started going to when he was six months old. So I could exercise, I was upstairs. He was downstairs with Jason and a bunch of other little babies and kids because moms do that. So it's not criminal. Yeah, it's my glasses microphone case. It's not criminal to do that. And your son, had problems with drugs. So I detoxed him, took him to the drug clinic and got him out of the hospital on at least four different occasions while I was pregnant. You weren't there. His mother wasn't there. Where the, his sister wasn't there. Where the fuck were you people? Oh, that's right. This pregnant bitch had to go into the hospital with her small three-year-old and do that shit to, um, to do that. So I did that. How much is that worth? How much is that worth? How much is that worth to you? Mm. Yeah. Okay. I cooked dinners, bought birthday gifts, did whatever you could do, worked, paid bills, bought braces, dentists. I shouldn't have to defend myself, but these are things I tried to do. Of course, here's the kicker. When they write the check, when they write the check, they like to tell you, you did nothing because they wrote the check. But what did you pay for out of your bank? What did you pay cash for? What did you bring home with food? Did you bring furniture home? Do you know, whatever. Yes, she did try to best feed my baby. Yeah, that's another thing that bitch did. She fucking breastfed my child, according to the neighbor. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Anyway, note to anybody that thinks that you're going to get even for me speaking the truth. You're going to have to come kill me, okay? So good. I'm glad we're over that. All right. Yeah. Cool. Okay, now we've done that, right? 
<laughs> I can't stop myself. This is the problem. I have a, let's see, your son. I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. John keeps saying to me, <laughs> he keeps saying, you've got to stop talking. Jason hears everything. He's talking about me talking to Ken. I'm like, I'm not saying anything. You know who's saying something? Johnny boy is saying something. So something happening with that, but that's okay. You keep talking. Note to self. You keep talking. Thank you, Julie, for that. Let's see. I get this. Mine three years older. Yes, you get it. You keep talking there from the home front. You <laughs> yes, she has kids with the man that she married who had a boyfriend prior. And now they're getting divorced, I hear. It's all allegedly. I don't know. Because I don't talk to her. I don't talk to her. Yeah, anyhow. Yeah, of course he's trying to. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Keith is gone. That's all I can tell you is my Keith, he's gone. So it doesn't matter. I'm not shutting up. So I'm never going to shut up. And there's a real problem in this country. That's how abuse continues in every way. Whether it's, whether you're a bully mouth, a psychological terrorist, a mental terrorist, whatever it is you are, when people do, big surprise, beard marriage, I know, right? I married a beard. I mean, I'm the beard. Ah, yeah, I had kids. I'm a beard. Why'd I get married? Quick. Quick pro quo, money. I push out ho, I get money. Exactly. Um, <laughs> that's what happens. If you're not going to marry for love, you really shouldn't call it marriage. And I'm going to stick with that. That is my opinion. I'm assuming I can have my own opinion. But here's the problem I've noticed in society. Anytime you get punched in the face by somebody and you mention that you get punched in the face, they threaten you. They threaten you. Like, like you're going to get even. It's going to bite me in the ass. It's not going to bite me in the ass. You know why? It's, it's John, was, wait, John is gay? No. No, I, I hope not. I mean, that would be, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not a beard. I'm saying there's a beard in the family. I'm not one. Um, yeah, they count on silence. I'm not being silenced because, <laughs> no, stop that rumor there. <laughs> stop that rumor, you guys. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Crystal. Stop the rumor. That's a rumor. <laughs> no, allegedly. Anyway, they count on your silence. I'm not going to be, what's a beard? A beard is a dumbass woman who marries a man for money, who she knows is gay and deliberately marries because she thinks she's going to be secure because there's money. It's a beard. So they use marriage and they hide behind the union of a man and woman to debase it, defile it, and fuck with other women because they run around with their money and their rings and their jewelry and their cars and they're like, I have all of this. You're married to a gay man. You do know that, right? Like you're pretty fucking sure that's what a beard is. So Tom Cruise's wives, most Hollywood wives, <laughs> exactly. Most of those people, right? <laughs> um, so I know the stalker's back, right? Anyhow, all of this aside, what I've noticed with people that end up in relationships that are abusive, what I've noticed, you'd know by now if he was gay. <laughs> I think so. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not there. I do know he's an alcoholic. That much I do know. But I, the rest of it, I don't know. But am I not supposed to speak it? Because I put everything of myself out there so that they cannot blackmail me. That's why I do it. So if I'm out there and anybody is out there and they talk about what happened in their personal relationship from their personal experience, that is what they get the right to do. You don't get the fucking right to do what you did after Keith died. You don't get the right to do that. You don't get the right to speak to me that way. You don't get, John, you don't get the right to do that. You don't get the right to do it without me retaliating verbally. You don't. If you think you want to come on here and you want to debate, then you come on here and debate. But you don't get for, to shut me up. Oh, my God. Tracy, thank you for that. I can't. Oh, fuck. Ah, oh, there. <laughs> I can't see it. Thank you, Tracy. You said something. Come back and tell me what you said. But all abuse victims should speak out. Telling my truth the way that I experienced my life is not, this, this happened when I worked at one of the, yeah, there you go. So you speak. I'm not shutting up now. I spent 35 years in hell and I'm not shutting up. And not all of it was hell. On the outside, he appears very, appears like it might be an okay marriage. 
but there's always an imbalance. I'm sorry, please come after me if there isn't. There's always an imbalance of power when you have somebody in a position of authority like Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky and then the age difference. That is an imbalance of power. I don't care if she wants to suck his dick. I don't care what misogynistic men say. I don't care. That's an imbalance of power. When you marry a young girl, even though she was a you know, sex worker on the street, why are you marrying a girl coming out of the strip club and then you have an issue with her being a stripper? And then you want to keep calling her a whore. Why are you doing that? What is wrong with you? You married her, so what is wrong with you? I know what is wrong with me. I know where I came from. I know that I had an older father and I know that I fuck older men. I know that. I know that. I never denied it. I never fucking denied it, okay? Never denied it. What are you doing it for? I, what are you doing it for? So I wanna know what you're doing it for, daddy. What are you doing it for? What are you doing it for? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, what are you doing? The husbands, exactly, bingo. So what, what are you doing it for? Because a young girl that's been a prostitute or a stripper run away from home at 14, although you may imply that they're worldly, you may imply shit like that, it's not actually true. They're coming out of abuse, okay? And they're coming into a circumstance. So they're taking care of themselves, you know? Um, you like younger dudes, yeah, see? I wonder, well, you might like younger men just because, I mean, there's a reasonable age difference. Not something like 40, 50 years, James Woods. That's not normal. Yeah, people do like younger men. They do. Late 20s, early 30s. I don't know how you, I don't know how old you are to say, if you're 30 yourself, that's fine. Um, yeah, wait, let's see. Hold on, wait. This world teaches you it's bad to stand up for yourself with two wrong. Oh, right? What? No, no, I'm talking. I'm going to go down talking. You know why? Because when my son died and I came to tell you, I, I, I shouldn't have to justify this. I'm on the rant again. When my son died and I came back from his funeral, whatever, service, and Jason had the car, you know, totaled his car and ended up unconscious. And I went to talk to his father. What he said and what he did that night, I'm never going to stop saying, my son died and you fucking did that? You took the mother of your child, the only reason you have two children, and you did that? You suck. You suck dick big time, okay? You suck. Um, oh, yeah, John always acts like he's better than strippers. So does his daughter. <laughs> they always think they're so fucking good. No, you aren't. No, you aren't. No, you're not. Because nobody's good and nobody's bad. We're all just different. So when you make a judgment like that, Oh, I know. Well, I don't. I, I think when you're that disrespectful to women, you're misogynist. Yeah, it's, I like 10 years, not a Hugh Hefner. I went for the Hugh Hefner type, not the wearing the pajamas shit, not that. I don't want nobody wearing the pajamas. Um, I was pretty. I'm now an older woman. I don't even care about that. I don't even fucking care. I don't care any, I don't need a man. I'm done. I had my kids, my kid died. I don't need anything. But I'm saying I'm not going to shut up. Even though I always say I'm going to shut up, apparently I'm not going to shut up. I'm not. So strippers, yeah, we know things. We see how men are. So we see what men do in the clubs. We see that. That's my life experience. And, oh, I love, yeah, whatever. Anyway, I I'm just not. So when you marry a man who tries to defend your parents for the reason you ran away at 14, you know that he's being a complete chaos-causing douche. Don't say shit like that. You weren't there. I left. You didn't. You didn't have the courage to run away. I did. So there you go. Strippers do make good money. Um, yeah, blessings blocker. That's a good word. Yes. Chaos causer. Familiar curse. Two sons dead. So it's a family curse in our family. And it's not my family. I just married into it. But it is a family. A lot of strippers can be hustlers. Absolutely they can be hustlers. Of course they can. I'm not very good at it. But yeah, I've always worked. I've worked my whole life, whether they want to say it. I've also paid bills my whole life. It's infuriating. It's fucking infuriating to have someone say you don't pay bills. I'm still paying your car insurance and your phone bill, daddy. I mean, Jesus. And I don't have to pay it, but I am fucking paying it. And your dinner and your Christmas dinner and your shit. And this is him. This is him at the dinner after Keith died with Keith's friends. Oh, here's a picture. Here's a picture of my ex-wife. My son just died. 
I just bought Smokehouse dinner. Y'all bought $50 steaks or $40 steaks. I paid for it. Thank God you picked it up. But you thought during dessert, you would fucking whip out a picture of the good old ex-wife some 30 plus years later and shove it down my face because my son is dead and you want to tell his friends about your blonde ex-wife. You think I'm not going to talk about that? You think you're going to fucking sue me over that? You're not going to. So you can bite my ass two ways to Sunday. I will never shut up. Um, <laughs> yes, he was competing. Yes, for Key's friend's attention. Yes. I wasn't saying anything. I was sitting over on the side eating my dinner. And Kenna, Kenna goes, Kenna stuck up for me. I'm not going to say what she said because it's not the ex-wife's fault that her ex-husband's a mental patient, patient pulling her picture out. So all the kids left. Kenna, Ken, I know it's so disrespectful. That's how he is though. So that's how he is. I know, jealous much, right? <laughs> I know, is he jealous? What a fucking jealous boy. What an insecure, jealous bitch. But you don't know it when you're 20. You know, I know he thinks any attention is good. Exactly. But here's the point, ladies and men. It's not, I know it's not Keith's mom. Like, and then I said, I said after Keith's friends left, like, what, what is that for? And he said, <laughs> burritos, come on. I can't, I know because it's insulting to the ex-wife, but no, I won't say that. I'll just say that Kenna defended me. Yes, he's always competitive with me. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's actually disgusting. So, yes, he hates everything about me. I don't know why he married me. He fucking hates me. He hates me more now. I hear. I hear it through the grapevine. He hates me now. <laughs> anyway, um, is he with me? I'm sorry your son passed. Yeah, Kenna, um, yeah, Kenna was very good. I'm sorry your son passed. Yeah, no, Kenna jumped right to my defense immediately. And then when everybody left, I said... Is there a reason that he's like, well, Keith's friends need to know my past? I'm like, have they asked you your past in the past 24 years before little Doodleberry passed away? Rascal is good. And so, yeah, I'm going to stop paying the bills soon. I know. I know. He's not worth it. But I this this is coming through a side. My son died, too. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Uh, if he hated you. No, he just wants the money. He thinks if he holds up the marriage, but thank God in, in the United States of America, that paper, that paper is going to be signed. And then his little girl can have her daddy back and daddy and baby can be happy together. And I can be fucking free. Okay. Free. And then I'm going to throw a fucking party to be free. And no, I'm going to throw a big party anyway. Um, I don't know what he was doing, but he did that. That's what he did. That's actually what he did. I'm sorry. Now I'm talking about him again. He's going to get riled up and he's going to call his family member. Ring, ring. Sloan's lying about me. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm telling the actual fucking truth. I'm telling the actual fucking truth. And if you want to come with me and you want to stand in front of me on a camera and we videotape everything, then, then we'll see who's lying. But it's not me. I'm not listening to that shit anymore. So no, I'm hoping it gets, it has to go before the judge and then the judge agrees if it can be signed or not. I know, flying monkeys, right? Um, I'm copying your tattoo with my boys. Oh, good job, Pepper. Do it. Find a beautiful picture. If you're in LA, look for Ruger X tattoos after he finishes mine, after he feels like working again. Um, yeah, Kelly is a no-fault divorce. Correct. No fault. I'm not even roasting him. I'm literally telling you the truth. I'm literally telling you the truth. You have no idea of the circular, word salad, garbage arguments that went around and around and I participated, which makes me hate myself, that I even thought, that I even dared to dumpster dine in that conversation of garbage, okay? Seriously, seriously. I have my power back. I have my power back, I left. I did what I said I would do and I left. And unfortunately, my child died. And then I found out what kind of fucking retard he was after my son died. Uh, whatever. But, and just so we're very clear, so we don't sue anybody, okay? So we're very fucking clear. It's actually a fact that money was found in Keith's room and given to John. And that John said, 
You don't deserve any of it because you didn't live with him for six months prior to his death for six months. And I had to leave you. And he was 24 and I wasn't asking for the money. I was asking why you didn't tell me you had the money. So he wanted to keep that $10,000 for himself. Well, you met your husband. I know, right? Yes, I did meet my husband, not only in the bar, in the strip club. I met John in a strip club and you can't fucking sue me for saying it. Fucking, uh. Okay, I'm over it. But see, this is what happens. They call me, I get calls and I go off. So yeah, <laughs> no, it's not gonna end well for him. It's not going to end well for him because if you're going to marry me and I'm off the street, at least like, wasn't that show Evita? Wasn't she a prostitute? Like, didn't they treat her good? Didn't she run a country? Like, can I get a modicum of respect here? I don't want to run a country, but just like this much respect. So yeah, the money out of Keith's, out of Keith's room. And Jason said, I gave it to my dad so he could pay for the funeral. And then old old, you know, I must hoard everything and steal it. I'm a greedy piece of shit after my son died. I'm actually thinking about the money and not my wife who's getting a forensic photographer trying to figure out how to get a funeral. I'm not thinking of helping her. I'm just thinking of fucking stashing that money. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what happened. Yeah. And that's not a lie. That actually happened. So the trolls are probably the family members. Yeah, <laughs> they did steal Keith's money. They did steal Keith's money. They stole the shit out of the room and they stole fucking Keith's money. I'm not over that. That was my son. That's not just your son. That's my son as well. So, and my ex stash money. But, oh, they all do that. They think their money's important. When you're on your deathbed, buddy boy, don't be calling for me. Call for your daughter. She'll come running for you. Call for her. She'll wear her sexy lingerie to help you bedside. Yeah, that's right. Because she knows what you like to wear to bed. Because she gave it to me. Her words, not mine. Her words, not mine. Her fucking words, not mine. Okay, I'm over. All right. So, <laughs> I can't stop it. Uh, did Keith file taxes? I, uh, You know, I have no idea. I don't know anything about that. We repel you trolls. Go away. I birthed him. No, I know I birthed him. I wasn't even looking for the money. I'm just saying they robbed his room, hid it from me. I was told the day after, hid it from me. And then when I said to John, did you take 10 grand out of Keith's room? He's like, well, it was more like five. It was 10. It was eight or 10, whatever. I'll give him a 2000 discount. And, <laughs> and yeah, I'm going to talk about the new moon. I have to stop. I just got a phone call before I got here. I get a phone call. People tell me and I go crazy. That's all. Uh, no, I got it. I got it. It's not a problem. I don't like people telling me that I can't talk about what I want on my YouTube channel and that I'm making up stories. That's not a fucking story. I'll say it right to your face. I'll say it in public and I'll say it in a court of law. That happened. We have many witnesses and the person that told me you had the money can also be a fucking witness. But it made me furious that my son was dead and on the ground. And the first thing everybody thought of was how to rob his room. It's actually sickening. It's actually fucking sickening. It's sickening. Okay. So there is a karma for that. There's the karma for that. Um, my wife, wait, I can't even understand what you're saying. All right. So anyway, getting on to it, we have Keith would have wanted that in. Yeah. Rascal. Well, he might've wanted to give money away to whatever he wanted to give money away for or whatever he wanted to do. I don't know what he wanted to do. I just know that it probably should have been discussed. It wasn't just yours because I was forced to move out of my marriage after 33 years. Ladies, if you have to leave a man after three decades, perhaps that man has to take this much accountability for it because you're not going to another man. You're not moving in with anybody. You're leaving with nothing, right? Well, you, you have a job, but you're leaving with nothing. They won't, you, the man won't give you anything, but you still feel it necessary to leave this person. So if you do feel that, then maybe that person is a fucking jerk off. You know, maybe he's a jerk off. Maybe that's what it is. So there's that. 24 years. There you go. No one's just leaving. And I didn't leave for another man. I don't have a man. Um, wait, his second son is lying dead and he stole his money. Yeah, that's that's what he did. Well, Jason took the money and gave it to his dad for the funeral because he knew where he stashed his money. They're brothers, right? So, 
Keith, Jason went and got it and told me I thought my dad would pay for the funeral, which he did give me like 2700 after I caught him with the money. But he told me I'm not entitled to the money because I moved out. I moved away from my children and did not want to because this man was obnoxious. Um, I never waste your years. Oh my God, two marriages, 10 years wasted on there. Honey, I've got three decades. Zorro, thank you for that. You, Zora, not Zorro, <laughs> sorry, Zora. Um, my mother-in-law used to have a friend named Zora, actually. You know what? You got out in 10 years. You have wasted your time. You have wasted your time. I wasted three decades with a man that actually doesn't like me and whose family feels okay doing what they did after my son died. So they feel okay with that. They think that that's fucking cool. Cool. Um, yeah, it's a gender. John's too, John is weak. He's weak. He's, you know, and then, and then to always be arguing about sobriety, like it's a bad thing. And like, I'm too black and white with sobriety. No, you, nobody wants their kids high on drugs. Nobody wants their kids smoking weed every day. Nobody wants that to happen with their own children. Let's really pay attention to that. You don't wish that for your children. And if you wish that for your children, you're abusive. So I led by example. That's what I did. I led by example. The example I led by, though, was kind of wrong because I fought their father 24-7. So I just found socks at my dude's place. Oh my God, Brittany, whose socks? Girl socks or boy spot socks? Maybe they're your socks. Um, anyway, okay, so we have a new moon in Leo. We have a new moon in Leo. This is just a note. If you've gone through abuse and you're telling your story, and they're perfectly fine to tell their story too. I put my shit out there public front and center so you can't get at me, okay? I learned to do that living in this marriage. I learned not to drink. I learned not to fucking do anything. I learned to walk the line straight so you can't get at me. But if you think you can get at me, then go ahead and try. Go ahead and fucking try. Go do it. Because I don't live that way. Because I don't want you getting at me. That's the kind of relationship I had with this fucking guy. I couldn't, you know what? It might've been nice to drink or do something or go to a party. Not with him. He'd use it against you. He still, he brought up my ex-husband's name 35 years later at dinner. Why are you bringing that up 35 years later? What is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? Who even mentioned him? I was married four months. What are you even fucking doing? Um, I don't have a clue. I don't know my son too well. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know much about Jason at all, unfortunately. I, I couldn't tell you. I don't see him enough to know. So, you know, I don't know what to say. Um, my dad has... See? What? There you go. Your dad has an insurance policy. Thank you, Tracy, for the super chat. Tracy, Tracy, that I didn't read your message. Okay, your dad has an insurance policy on you. What fucking weirdo does that? Who says that and who does that? Your kids are not a commodity. If they are a commodity, you're a piece of shit. It's not business. You're a piece of shit. It's not justifiable. You're a piece of shit. Do not put insurance policies on your kids. That's willing them to be dead. That's willing them to be dead. Don't do that. That's terrible. You are a piece of colossal shit. Oh, I just don't even know what to say. Okay, we have a new moon. I'm switching topics. Now I got, thank you so much for listening. I should never get on the phone before I do live. Do you think? I, I don't know. I mean, Jason has reasons to be mad at me. I'm not going to take, you know, I, I did screamed at him, socked him one, put him in juvenile hall. He's got reasons to be mad at me. Yes. But I was trying to do the best I could. And I don't think his father talking behind my back all day long is a good thing. Yeah, Lori, no, don't do it with your kids. Earn your own money and pay for your shit. Get a GoFundMe. Don't put insurance, don't put life insurance on your children. That's crazy. Don't do that. And especially when they're drug addicts, that's setting them up to fail. Especially after their brother dies and you mention it to the other one who's riding a motorcycle and, motorcycle and tell him he's probably going to end up in an accident and he agrees with you and thinks you should put a policy on him. That's somebody in mental distress, emotional distress. Um, yeah, Jason's still mad at me. I mean, I don't know if he's mad at me or not. I, as I said, I don't talk to him. Um, yeah, it is feeding fear. 
I don't know. I think. <laughs> no, John would never compliment me. <laughs> That's not, it is abusive. I think it is abusive to do that. I think my neighbor called me and said that. Kenneth called me and said it. If they want to lie about it and pretend they didn't, they did. They fucking did. I had a witness in the car. I had a friend in the car with me. When that call came through, I put it on speakerphone just so I don't get nailed. So anybody talks to me or says I said anything, I'm going to be fucking taping it all. And then that's it. Okay, so anyway, we have a new Leo moon on the 28th. What time is this new Leo moon in? 10.55 a.m. I think that's the right time. It's at 5 degrees and 39 seconds of Leo. But here's the kicker. Oh, happy birthday on the 1st. Here's the kicker. The kicker, the kicker of this new Leo moon, okay, is that we have on August 1st, so we have the new Leo moon on the 28th. We have Jupiter. Keithy was so, here's Keithy. There's Keithy. Uh, every day I look at, I see Keithy in the mirror when I'm brushing my teeth. Okay, we have Jupiter going retrograde on the, on the new moon, okay? Jupiter's going retrograde. Let's see what degree it goes retrograde in. It's going retrograde on the 28th. So Jupiter has been going forward. I believe Jupiter's in Aries. I've tried not to look because I just want to, punch people in the face. So I'm not, I'm running. I get made fun of too. When I exercise, all you do is hike. That's right, bitch. That's right, bitch, because I can. Got a problem with that too? Is that upsetting to you? Okay, so we have Jupiter going retrograde at eight degrees and 43 seconds of Aries. So Jupiter retrograde is going to be hitting people within a three degree orb. So it's at eight degrees of Aries and it's going backwards. So that's going to be anybody from five degrees of Aries and then 11 degrees of Aries. So it's going to be hitting your chart in that way until it starts moving backwards. And it's retrograde, retrograde, retrograde. It's going backwards. So it's going to hit over the lower numbers. It's going from eight backwards. And I think it's around December, October. Let me see exactly when it goes direct. Nope, December. I think it's, yeah, it goes direct on the 23rd of November at 28 degrees and 48 seconds of Pisces. So Jupiter's going right the fuck back into Pisces, right back. So we have, we also have, this is interesting. So we have the new moon at five degrees of Leo. On the same day, Jupiter is going retrograde. The new moon and Jupiter are trining as Jupiter starts to go backwards down the street at eight degrees of Aries, okay? And then, and then we have Uranus, Mars, and the North Node all smooshing up and cuddly and cozy conjuncting. So we have, let's see, uh, on August 1st, we have a conjunction Mars Uranus conjunction, sudden unexpected events that happen to the men in your life. Conjunct the North Node in Taurus. Uranus in Taurus is interesting because Taurus is an earth sign and it's pretty steady and it does things pretty, you know, steadily, right? And then when you are looking at Uranus in the steady sign of Taurus, it can be sudden upheaval. Now, I tend to think with Jupiter going retrograde into Pisces and Uranus on Mars, Conjuncting the North Node that this is a world event happening. I don't think it is specific to um, necessarily individuals. I think that it has a lot to do with, I know, I wish they would stop talking. Somebody keep reporting them and block them. I don't care if you like what I look like. I'm not, it doesn't matter. I don't get pride in what I look like. Like I look like my mother. That's what pisses them off too because they got to fill their lips full of filler and Botox and they still look like trolls. Anyhow, I just look like my mom, so I can't help it. So stop insulting me with sexual comments because I look like my mother, okay? Like, don't do that. That's rude. No woman needs you to compliment on how they look. Just to be truthful, if you think the woman's attractive, then she probably can look in the mirror and see what she looks like. And as such, she doesn't need a bunch of randos saying, oh my God, you look so good. No one cares. No one fucking cares. No one cares. Like, why do I care what I look like? I don't care. So, I mean, I don't want to look like a troll, but yeah, I know. Yeah, Keith looked like me. Yeah, my Keithy did look like me. He looked like John too, though. 
you know, I, I used to see my mother-in-law when he looked through his glasses at me, I'd be like, oh, that look, I know that look. Um, yeah, men, I mean, they think it's a compliment. You're not, you know, I mean, I'm just going to say this. It's not a compliment to keep telling a woman about parts of their body when you don't know the woman. I could have herpes on my lips. So why are you talking to me? You don't know what I have. I could have monkey pox. I could have a lot of shit. It is St. Germain. I'm wearing St. Germain over another thing because, um, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's too many sexual comments. Like, I'm going to be 56. I don't fucking care. I've had sex before and I've had children. So I wasn't impressed by any of it except having my children. I could do without the men and I could do without the sex. I have a vibrator, so therefore I don't need a man. And the vibrator doesn't talk to me. So it's a double plus. I don't have to listen. They're not drunk. They're not fucking stupid. They don't say dumbass things. And it's quick. And then I'm happy in my life again. That's all. I'm just saying. I don't need the man. I don't need the man attached to the body part that's going to have a conversation. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, 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 none of that. Uh, yeah, I have a magic wand, exactly. <laughs> it's so much better. Men fucked up when they took mistresses and prostitutes because they're like, there's no emotional connection. Guess what? Every woman on the planet has a vibrator and she don't need your fucking ass in her head. That's right, or wherever you think you're going to put your ass. Exactly. <laughs> um, Keith was very empathic. Yeah, so whatever. Anyway, we have... Um, we have on August 1st, men have to learn that. Like if you're going to put up with a man, it's probably because you want to have kids with them and start a family. I'm on the other side of that and no one pays attention to old ladies. Like you're probably 75 on there saying that shit because nobody's paying attention to me at my age, nor are they paying attention to any woman really over the age of 30 because we're in a pedophilic society. They can say they are. I don't buy it for one second. I do not buy it. Put a woman here that's in her 50s and bring a 30-year-old, that guy going to gravitate right over there. He going to go like a fucking magnet this way, even if she's dumb as shit. Even if she's not dumb and she's smart, that man is going right over there to the 30-year-old. The woman in her 50s, she's exposable because these men think that they don't look like they do in their 50s. They think that they're still hot, but you're not hot in your 50s, but they're hot. Okay. Anyway, um, wireless and battery-free. Exactly. And then there's porn. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> then there's porn. So I don't need anybody. Like, no. So, I mean, porn is bad because of the energy through the porn. So you have to be careful of your porn. But either way, you don't need a man. You have it. So when you comment on here like a bitch in a strip club, which I'm not in, I don't like that. No, guys don't like older. I know you say that. They do if they're mentally ill. I mean, I'm sorry. If somebody's going to like a woman in, <laughs> in her 50s and he's way, way younger, maybe his mom did something to him. I'm not participating in that either. So, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Richard Gere was cute. If you can get over the gerbil ruler, r rumor, allegedly. Okay. Mm. Older women are totally powerful. Totally powerful. We are totally fucking powerful. I am so powerful now because I don't listen. If you And I never believed flattery. Like if some, yeah, go Google Richard Gere in the gerbil, then you'll know. Or hamster, I forget. But if you, if you look at women right now, they don't buy into what these men do. So a lot of men can't handle women that are older because they have to literally, literally be on the up, up and up and speak properly and they don't want to do that they don't want to do that yeah i know porn is bad porn is bad however with a vibrator it works perfectly well i'm just saying at least i don't have to talk to a man i'm not saying i watch porn i'm just saying should you watch porn and have a vibrator then you don't have to listen to a man argue and call you a whore and talk to you about a bunch of nonsense all fucking day long it doesn't matter if i'm hot what does that fucking have? What do you think? That's an accomplishment? Why do people think it's an accomplishment when they say that you look good? John Travolta's gay. I thought that was a Travolta. A gay thing? I don't know what you mean. Scientology? Whichever. Anyway, why do people think, oh, you're pretty? I look like my mother. Just like if you're ugly, you look like your mother. Okay? Like it's the same fucking thing. If you don't like your face, go to your parents and yell at them. 
If you like my face, go to my mother and tell her thank you. But don't, it's it's nothing, it's, it's like saying I like your skin color. I didn't fucking do it. I was born this way. Right? Right? I mean, seriously. So we have to stop doing that because I'm not defined by how I look. I don't need your thing. And I don't know why people do that. They think that they're, be he's flaming. Yeah, probably. I don't know why they do that. I don't know why they do it. It's so, um, I mean, you don't want to look like a garbage bag. You like to put makeup on and I wear just basically the same thing every day, but <laughs> I do not understand why a man thinks, oh, you're beautiful. Oh my God, really? Am I? Jeez, I got your approval now. Maybe when I'm 20, I need that. But I don't need it now because I don't fucking care. I can see what I look like in the mirror. I know what I look like. So you talking to me is bullshit. So there. Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to look like a garbage bag, I don't care what anyone looks like. All of my people look differently in my life. Like no one cares. Um, nobody cares, right? All right. So, all right. So let's move on. I can promise you this, the last thing I'm ever going to do on this earth is literally ever allow another man around me in my personal space. This is never going to happen. I will die by myself with my cat, therefore being a cat lady, I will never let a man in my space ever again. That's how much I think of what they say. Don't trust them. They can be, I have great friends that are male, but mm -mm, no, no. Oh, flattery. Yeah, no, flattery is bullshit. Flattery is designed. Flattery, anybody, listen, if anybody flatters you, it's designed to drop your senses so you don't see what they're really doing. That's what it's designed to do. Nobody needs to go around flattering people. You can say, thank you so much. I really like your dress. I like your hair. You can be kind, but constant flattery, there's a problem with that. Somebody's trying to distract you from something else. It's a problem. We don't teach people that. I know, proud cat lady here. Uh, I feel flattery is so manipulative. So manipulative. If I'm having sex with you in bed and I'm with you in an intimate relationship and you say I'm attractive, I may listen to you at that point. But if you're not in my, like, I don't care what you say. I mean, it's nice or it's not nice. I don't care. Uh, so there's that. But anyhow, getting back to it, we have Uranus. I have a cat. I like my cat. And she's my friend. I like her. It's totally manipulative. It's totally manipulative. It's very, very, yeah, I know. It's like, oh, you're so cute. Oh my God, how did I ever live without you saying that? Like, did I ever live without you saying that instead of Alley Girl? I mean, shut up. You look like a troll. How about that? Like, shut up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Um, I'm like, and like no. Um, it's just, it's, yeah, it's fake. It's just, I can't. It's, it's, you know, oh, you're so smart. Oh, gee. Wow. A guy called me smart. Oh my God. I'm dating a man. He has money. No one cares. Do it yourself. Jeez. This society is really fucked up. We women are fabulous. I finally got, I finally got divorced this past June after 40 ish years. Oh my God. Nancy, do tell. Nancy gets a divorce party. 40 years, I'm right behind you. Aren't you happy? Good girl, Nancy. Nancy got some balls. She got divorced after 40 plus years. Nancy, I'm truly applauding you. Good job, Nancy. Bravo. Oh my God, so fabulous. Mew is sleeping. I think she's, she's sleeping over on the couch. I fed her before I went here. She gets mad when I don't feed her. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> no, I'll never get married again. I wouldn't do it again if you gave me a million dollars. I would never get married again if I came back in this life, saw Jason and Keith, I literally would fuck, get knocked up, move into my own house, keep my children, and not let the man in my house. Like, you can meet me for dinner over there, but you are not coming in here. No, no, never again. Uh, I beat Nancy, feels like... <laughs> <laughs> you beat Nancy. There you go. Okay, good. Yeah. I, I mean, seriously, Nancy, good job. Okay, Nancy, good job. In June, bravo. I am so proud of you. 40 plus years and you got rid of that man. Yes. Let's see, my divorce is pending 24 plus years. Mine is pending. It's in court right now to get the paper signed because John won't sign the paper. So it has to go to the judge and the judge can like remove... Me being married to him, that's the first step. 
and then there can be the property later. But the first step is that piece of paper. You don't get me on that piece of paper anymore. And I'm throwing a party. You can throw a party too, John. Um, okay. <laughs> Salmon dinners, party, whatever. And I'm going to keep the family name because it annoys your family so much. You can't make me give up the family name. You cannot make me give up the family name ever. I'm keeping it because my children have it. Because I've had it my entire adult life and I will be keeping it. I never met a right guy. Thank you very much. I never met a right guy. I meet people that are nice, but I'm not with them. It's my name, I know. John thinks he's gonna steal. He, he knows somebody who can buy my website right away. Probably his daughter, he thinks. But here's the thing. You're not Sloan Bella. So if you buy my website out from under me, which you can't do because it's trademarked, but either way, if you fucking think you can buy it, you cannot work under my name because it's my name and that would be fraud. You are not me, therefore you can't have my website, my pictures, or my background, or take credit for me. You can, however, have the money you spent in 1999 when I put up my first website. You can have that money back for that, the website that was stolen, if you feel it, that was under a different name. That one was under Bella Star Talk. That's the first website. You would have the money back for that. I will give you the money back for that. But you are not taking my name. So isn't that funny? A guy wants you to pay him alimony, but he wants to take your business. So how are you going to pay him alimony if you don't have a business? I'm just asking because I'm stupid at this point. Um, <laughs> oh my God, I will tell you what you said that stopped my heart. Oh my goodness. Okay, so getting back to astrology. I go on these rants. I really have to let go of them. I promise I'm not talking about this, but people have to stop calling me and telling me bullshit on the phone about how I'm lying about, you know, ever contributing in the household. Like, don't fucking tell me I'm lying about it. Yeah, he's being spiteful. That's right. And I'm talking. I'm going to continue to talk. Just like I did when I was a little girl and I grew up in my home. And just like my cousin said to me, we all knew what was happening, but we didn't know how to get away from you. And I couldn't go against my mother because she didn't want to lose the money. That's what was told to me. Okay, then. That's good. And I'm not going to shut up now. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. All right. So we have Uranus planet. Let's see. I do something. Okay. Yeah. Well, you could get lost. That's what John can't do. <laughs> um, yeah, seriously. I'm not going to shut up. You're not going to threaten me. You're not going to take anything. No one's going to stop me from talking my truth and my life experience. These are my life experiences. I will continue to speak it. If you don't want to be on my channel, then get the fuck off, right? No one cares. Um, no, Bella's my married name. That's John's name. He thinks he owns my business. No, it's not an LLC. It, no, it's my name. It's my calling card. You don't own me. You don't fucking own me. You don't own me. You didn't create me. I was psychic before I met you. You don't own me. You may have fucking helped me along the way. You don't own me. And you cannot buy a business, you cannot take it, and you will not be taking it. So good luck with that. Neither will your little See You Next Tuesday family members be taking anything who are paying for your divorce according to you. Okay, so here we go. Oh my God, I gotta stop. Uranus in Taurus is conjuncting Mars in Taurus. So Mars is also Uranus, Mars, and the North Node, I think it's August 1st, are all in a conjunction. Let me check, that's what I was just checking. So we have Uranus at 18 degrees of Taurus. We have, uh, ooh, what was I saying? Mars at 18 degrees of Taurus combust on August 1st. And then we have the North Node at 18 degrees of Taurus. So this is pivotal. So from the new moon on the 28th with Jupiter going retrograde, to me, this is like portals opening up all over the place. So I feel they're getting ready to open up portals. And I do feel like this is going to be a world event. I feel this is, I have to block you. You're fucking obnoxious, you stupid cocksucker. Like seriously, go away. Um, okay, there. Honestly, like stop sexually harassing. Like really stop fucking doing it. Stop doing that. 
Oh my God, stop fucking talking that way, you motherfucker. If you were here, I'd punch you in the face, okay? And I'd have a right to. Don't do that shit. Oh my God, what the hell? It's probably a woman and it's probably a family member. Like, stop doing that. Stop. Um, <laughs> stop. Don't do that. Oh my God, stop. Yeah, whatever. Whoever said that, that's gross. That's like saying Jeffrey Dahmer wants to fucking talk to you. I don't care. I, you know, whatever. No, don't do that. I don't need anybody, nor do I want anybody over here. Mm -hmm. They can't sexualize me. I'm a grandma. Stop sexualizing me. Give me a break. You can't sexualize me. Stop. Okay? No one fucking wants to fuck granny panties. Okay? So consider me granny panties and shut the fuck up. All right. So here's the thing. We have Uranus conjuncting Mars, conjuncting the North Node. It, it could be like that, but I actually see it as other portals opening up because Taurus rules the earth. I actually think Taurus rules the earth, not just the earth plane and not just Venus, but actually the earth. So I feel like they're getting ready to jump through some portals and pull dimensions together during this because it's hitting the North Node. The North Node is a transiting North Node and the transiting North Node is basically universal right now. So meaning it's transiting through all of our charts in Taurus. Some people are born with the Taurus North node, but it's, it's a universal thing happening at the moment. So I feel like this is what's happening. It's going to hit your moon if you're at 18 degrees. All right. I just consider me granny panties and shut the fuck up and leave me alone. Honestly, like, please. Can you imagine like you're like 80 and some stupid man's trying to pick you up? It's like, go away. Go because men need women because they're, I'm sorry, weaker. They need to have a woman there. They need someone to take care of them. Just saying, it's true. Women usually don't get married again. Men always get married again. So there's that. I have a vibrator for that. I don't know that it's CERN. I actually feel like it's other portals all over the world. So I feel like there's a shit to, I know some people, they're pigs. Like come on my channel and I just, I get sick of it. It's not a compliment. It's an insult, actually. When you constantly critique someone's appearance, it's insulting. It's uncomfortable and it's fucking annoying. So stop doing that. It's stupid. Anyhow, North Node, yeah, they are pigs, aren't they? But we have this coming in and it's happening on August 1st. It's kind of giving me a vibe of like eclipse energy. And then we have the Jupiter retrograde in Aries, but trining the new moon in Leo. So that's some world function. To me, they're going to do something with the stock market during this time. That's how it feels to me. Taurus money, earthbound. Jupiter backwards, conjuncting the new moon, going retrograde, Aries, Leo. Something in an economic sense is what I'm feeling with Jupiter. And it might be, I don't know, something along those lines. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I know. It's I, I compliments can be shameful too because I don't trust them. So I feel like you're up to something. Let's see. In Jesus' beautiful name, <laughs> uh, funny Americans and Canadians say Uranus, like Uranus. Yes, yes. Well, what did I say? Uranus, Uranus. I don't know. I probably did say it wrong. Money war. There you go. I feel one world. But that's what I feel is going to happen. I feel like something's going to happen like that, and I feel like it's going to be a huge problem. Uh, it's always a good time to look after yourself. Yeah, it's always a good time to take care of yourself. What do you need a man for to make money? You don't. You should have a man around you that you enjoy the company of a man, that you enjoy the company of said man as a friend, not somebody who's going to do whatever. People's 401ks might get, it's sudden, it's unexpected. It's on August 1st, right after the new moon in Leo. Keep in mind, the new moon in Leo is at five degrees, slightly, well, it's uh, 13 degrees out of conjunction. I mean, opposition. It's 13 degrees orb out of the Uranus, Mars, and North Node, but it's still a squaring aspect there. So Leos are going to feel, uh, this world is so screwed up. It's so screwed up. It's so screwed up. Okay. Uh, so screwed up. Yeah. I was told I can't communicate in my marriage. I was told I keep asking the same question over and over again. You know why? Because I don't get an answer that's satisfactory. It sounds like gobbledygook. 
It sounds like nonsense and justification for shitty behavior because you're a fucking five-year-old that sucks your bloody thumb and can't get your own way. That's what it seems like. Could be wrong. Okay, so anyway, yeah. Taurus is... Let's see. Cash. Yeah, keep your word salad nonsense. Gobbledygook. That's what it's like. Blah, 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 blah. Gobbledygook. Um, oh, my God. See? No. Here's the first thing with that. Okay. I'm an Aries Sun, Taurus Moon, Virgo Rising, Mars and Pisces. Uh, for ground. Okay. I'm going to tell you tourmaline, obsidian, uh, shungite. Tourmaline, obsidian, shungite to ground yourself. Those are good. Um, they protect from psychic attacks because the Pisces party is going to get psychic attacks. But to ground yourself, tourmaline always. You can use brown or black tourmaline, either one. You can use um, shungite, elite or regular. You can use uh, obsidian. I'm a huge fan of obsidian. Obsidian blocks bitchy ass, stupid ass, manipulative psychic attacks underneath the fucking current. Yeah, I got granny panties on. No, I don't wear panties, but just consider me fucking granny. Okay. Anybody who talks this way are, they're going right there, gone. Do not comment on my face anymore. Stop doing that. It's ignorant. You're ignorant. It's insulting. Actually, stop doing that. I don't like it. I'm trying to go on and talk. I don't need your approval for my face. I can tell when it's genuine and when you're fucking with me. Stop fucking with me. Shungite. Yes, shungite on your windows. Um... Tourmaline on your windows, obsidian, obsidian right here, and people will tell you the truth, obsidian. So always put obsidian when people are trying to fuck with you and trying to do stuff with you, obsidian, okay, obsidian. So you want to put that right there, like right here, and the people aren't going to come near you. I'm a huge fan. This is obsidian. This is Barbara's bracelet, but this is obsidian. I wear obsidian. Put your stuff on, on your... Um, uh, what is it called? Now I just forgot the name of it. Oh my God. Selenite, my favorite. Put your stuff on your selenite. I know, right? Uh, that's, that's what I'm talking about, sweetheart. Roma, I was just talking about that. That's on the 1st of August. Well, here it is, Roma, the 28th of July. So in five days on Thursday, we have Jupiter going retrograde. We have the new moon in Leo. So happy birthdays to my fellow Leo people. Smoky Quartz, excellent. Thank you for that. Smoky fucking Quartz. I actually think the portals start to open up as Jupiter goes retrograde. As we hit August 1st, we have Uranus, Mars, and the North Node literally in Taurus combust. Conjunction is a three degree orb, possibly 10. Combust is living on top of. It is combust, meaning they're both 18 degrees like this. They live on top of each other, right? So there you're on the 20. You got you got it on your birthday, the new moon on your birthday. Now, I believe the portals opening up are going to be. Does Barbara have online store? She doesn't. Her name's Barbara. I never say it right. Yolia. Ugh. She's lovely. She makes the bracelets. I'm sure you could communicate with her and ask, tell her what you want. And she probably has PayPal or something. I'm sure she'd been sending them as gifts to me and Lila and Kenna and Paigey and everybody. So, and my girlfriends, happy birthday, Lori. Happy birthday. Okay. So the portals are opening up, but because Taurus, although it's Venus rules Taurus, I believe the earth rules Taurus. So the Taurus rules the earth plane. Taurus is about money. Uranus, Mars. Okay. So look at it in terms of Mars. What is Mars? Mars is cars, wars, men, metals, right? Mars in Taurus, metals of the earth and their financial capacity and what's going on. So financially, financially, what is what is going on with the stock market in reference to metals or in products that come out of the ground? Water, okay, watch the water. Whatever else comes from the ground, watch what comes out of the ground because whatever comes out of the ground is affected by Mars in Taurus, okay? 
Mars, God of War, exactly. But it comes out of the ground. So with the conjunction to Uranus and then to the North Node, transiting North Node right now, all of them 18 degrees, 18, 18, 18. So look in your chart for anything at 18 degrees because the 18 degrees is what's going to kick off in your chart. 18 degrees Scorpio, 18 degrees Taurus, 18 degrees Leo, 18 degrees Aquarius. So look to see what is at 18 degrees. And then, and then look to see where it sits in your chart. But I think this is a world thing because I think it's a portal. They're ushering us in. I can feel it like sheep going through a gate and they're all crowding together like this and they're going into the next field. They're in this big field, but they've taken the sheep and they push them like this. That is a huge problem. So, um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that is hard. August is a hugely hard month. I buried my son and had his celebration of life on my birthday, which will now always be his celebration of life on my birthday. Uh, Stellium and Sun in Scorpio, North Node and Taurus. He's going to be affected. It's going to hit all of that. It's going to cross his North Node. So your son was born. I have a Taurus North Node too, but it depends on the degree. So this is at 18 degrees. So this is going to skyrocket people one way or not. But I do think that it is a worldwide thing, okay? So I feel like it has to do with what's happening in the world, the stock market especially, in reference to oils and minerals and water, anything that comes from the ground, Taurus, the earth, the ground, okay? Anything that comes from the ground. Um, yeah, California gas, oh my God. I don't even look at the price. I'm like, whatever. You wanna know what happened? Oh my God. Okay. So Astral Assassin's channel is phenomenal. Okay. Sophia. Hi, Sophia. Sophia, Sophia. Because she's so right. There's a group of people that do work on the astral level. Okay. There's a, there's an entire group of people that work on the astral level. These people put out hits on people in the physical. Because remember, dimensionally, the astral level is like living in a house living in the Wizard of Oz and not seeing the guy behind the curtain, okay? So that's the astral level. Um, it's not understanding what's going on behind the curtain, but hearing it and being afraid of it. So the astral level right now is hugely... Hi, Bobby. Bobby, I went on a rant in the beginning, so ignore me. Bobby's like, you don't need to rant anymore. <laughs> She's right, but I did it anyway. Not too badly, just my truth. Anyhow, the astral level, there's a group of people that pick on people who are light workers, empaths, healers, whatever, on the astral level. So they're trying to win because the spiritual war is going on, but it's it's almost like we're in Captain Kirk's Star Trek. This is Kirk with the fake rocks in the 1960s and you know his bloated little belly walking through there. He's a ladies' man, Captain Kirk. And Spock going, Kirk, you can't do that. And then McCoy, drunk as shit. Then, you know, Lahura, Lahura, I can't say her, I almost called her Lahore, Lahura, I can't say it. She's there turning around, the girl's smart, right? So anyway, we're in Star Trek, and they're going backwards in time to like the 1930s, and then they're speeding up to whatever 1990s over here, right? This is what's happening right now. We are not understanding that Lahura, Lahura, <laughs> I can't say it. I never could. I sound like a ugh, poor woman. I don't, she was really pretty too. She was super pretty, that woman. Super pretty, all put together and smart on the show. Okay, so having said that, we are in the middle of a time warp. That's how I would word it. So there are people on the astral level. These portals are opening up and these people are attacking. Now, let me just tell you what happened. So last week, I'm driving somewhere early in the morning and there's this piece of tubing on the freeway, right over it, spins my tire out off the freeway I go, waiting three hours for AAA. Two days later, I'm coming back on the freeway, the opposite direction, truck in front of me, something falls off, I go to the right, blow out the other tire. So they are doing things, Mars in Taurus and Uranus. So what are they doing from the astral level? They are focusing metaphysical occult energy. We're definitely living in the fucking Truman Show. That's why it doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. 
anyway, those are two, oh, past people come back. South node is past, north is future. But that's why they're attacking in a physical sense. So a physical sense, why did you marry him again? I, I didn't marry, you're talking to someone on here. In a physical sense, they're attacking. Two tires in three days, spinning off the freeway. Thank God for the nice truck driver. I phoned Bobby, I'm like, it happened again. Anyway, the nice truck driver stopped and he wouldn't take money for helping me. He switched my too much devil hand signing. No, she doesn't do devil hands. She's dead on accurate with what she's saying. They go on the astral level and they play games. They play games all the fucking time, okay? Stay off the freeway. I gotta go, I gotta go so far. But anyway, the Mars, the Mars conjunct Uranus conjunct the North Node is going to bring about financial changes. Jupiter and Aries was going ahead to focus on something, okay? Going ahead. It's going retrograde with the new moon. So the influence between now and December is a whole lot of fuckery between the, the conjunction of the new moon and Jupiter, but Jupiter's going backwards. So it's going to separate from the new moon. It's going to go backwards into fucked up Pisces, okay? No more Jupiter and Pisces, please. Please, no more Jupiter and Pisces. You got the planet of expansion in the sign of Pisces, which is etheric. So there's no bounds and limits to what's going on. Jupiter is universal on the planet. It is all of our worlds, but far away worlds. It's going retrograde. So we're going from Aries, which is pretty cutthroat, back into Pisces. So we're letting things slip. Aries is diligent. Pisces is overlooking stuff because Pisces got to go on over here. So Pisces is overlooking things because Pisces works on the ethers. So Pisces is like gas fumes coming off the road and those gas fumes trying to catch them, trying to catch bubbles in the air. So it will all get ready for it on the 28th and Jupiter is going retrograde again. Neptune in Pisces, horrific. That Neptune right now is some, I have it on my Saturn in the eighth house. That's why all this shit is coming up. I'm getting sued left, right, and center. I got people telling me bullshit. You want to tell me bullshit? Come to my face and fucking tell me because I'll tell you the truth. I'm not going to lie, but it's like, and it's my perspective, how I see my marriage. I can talk about it. Heaven is above the astral level. The astral level is, it's, it's the dimension directly above the earth's dimension. So we're on the third dimension, roughly, give or take, about three dimensions from what you might want to consider hell. So we're like three dimensions. We're trying to elevate to the fifth dimension, which is to get out of, um, this is to get out of the 3D world. Think of a 3D world. Think of a 5D world. 5D world, you can see from five different points. 3D is just all about this money and this, this shit. And people go, it's just the world. It's only the world because you let it be the world because you refuse spirituality. You have black hearts. Do you know how many of these men in my life have told me they have black hearts? They don't believe in God. I'm full of shit. I believe in aliens. I do believe in aliens, by the way. I believe in demonic energies that come through your alcoholism and your cocaine addiction as well. Fentanyl, opener for demons. Meth, demon portal. I definitely believe in that. So the more that you tune out of your body, you're sharing space with something. So I literally believe that. Yes, that's correct. And I also, this is what I get yelled at, believe that the chrome exists, the chrome, and, and that the, the um, search engine called Adreno, I believe that that exists. And I believe that people do use children in unison for their own selfish gains. Much like somebody who would let her children go off with whatever and do whatever and not check on it because she was drinking wine or fucking the neighbor or whatever. I absolutely the fuck believe that. A thousand percent. I don't know how many di dimensions they are. They say heaven is pretty close to the 10th dimension. This is people handed on down. Do I personally know? No, because... I'm jumping like where Keith went, he went in a different dimension and I can jump in and out of dimensions and I don't know where they are or what they are. I do know when I've hit a lower astral level because I can tell from when I see. So when I've hit one below earth when I'm meditating, 
I can see it because the coloring is different. The way it makes me feel is different. It's very different. So I don't know how many dimensions there are. I really don't. And I think it's probably way beyond our consciousness. But meth, oh, meth throws you right into hell. Meth opens up the door, up come the cuckoo birds, and out of your eyes these cuckoo birds come. Meth is not good. It literally opens portals in the physical body like Swiss cheese. And then you have things that hook into the portals and travel with you. And those things start thinking like you and talking to you. They're meth demons. That's what they do. Alcoholics. Alcoholics think, oh God, do I really? You guys are fucking stupid. Anyway, yeah, heroin is another one. Heroin, heroin is like, heroin is interesting. Those are lazy demons because they just sit and stare at the TV and nod off. Like, but they go other places in their body. And once you've been an addict, once you've been an addict, you go into areas where, um, oh my God, meth is bleach. You're sniffing bleach. So once you go into an area with heroin and you let the demons in, because you are out of your body with heroin, it's a body stone. Yes, I did it as a teenager. So I'm just letting you know so that we can't use that against me. So we can't use it against me. No, no, no. Yeah, John Travolta is gay. Of course he's gay. Why wouldn't he be gay? He's gay. That's not me saying that. That's everybody posting it in the Enquirer and TMZ and all kinds of shit. Anyway, it throws you right out of your body. And so the body goes into a physical vibration of, I'm going to word it with heroin. It's kind of like a body stone and it's almost like an orga orgasmic feeling to the body. I don't know how else to word that. So it's a very pleasurable feeling. So you're giving off those vibes. So you have things coming into your body that want to experience that. Remember when there's demons, when there's things like that around you, they don't like living in our physical body because there's rules to physical containment. Obviously, I can't fly with my bat wings, right? So I watch him dance. <laughs> I know Bobby Brad Pitt. Somebody's like, watch John Travolta dance. If that ain't a gay man. But guess who trained Travolta to dance like that? Stallone was the choreo choreographer, chore choreographer for Travolta. Stallone. Rambo. Rambo, Rambo taught those moves. Rambo, where'd you get those moves, boy? Where'd you get them? So when we're talking, alcoholics become different. Oh, alcoholics are awful. Alcoholics are some of the worst because they are, they are demonic to the point of not understanding the level of vitriol that comes out of their mouth when they're drunk. People in bars are, the, I'm talking people who are alcoholics or drink too much. You know, even they've got women drinking three glasses of wine when they sit down. Do you think you really need three glasses of wine? Why don't you have 44 rolls? Why do you always need three glasses of wine? Like maybe you're drinking too much. And why are you drinking too much? So who's sharing your body with you? Who's sharing? Yeah, Stallone's about 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, he's not that tall. He says he's 5'9", but I'm six feet tall. So he's 5'9", like I'm six feet and I'm a, you know, beautiful black supermodel. That's how tall he is. Okay, so uh, find information. Okay. Oh, I got you. Okay, I'm I'll, I'll I'm gonna go back and look that up when I'm finished with this. So I'll look for your, what time is it? 6.43, I will write that down and I will look, I will speed the video ahead. 6.43, video check. Okay, so when you're looking at different drugs, let's see, would drink, yeah, well, when you drink and you feel like you're allowed to say and do things, you're destructive. And of course, when I'm arguing with addicts in the family, they're always like, well, it's not black and white. It is actually black and white to me. Nobody has a child and says, I want to teach this child how to drink alcohol, teach them to sell drugs out of their house, teach them to become a drug addict because I'm unwilling to deal with it have a child die and still continue to justify people's drug use because you want to go against the mother because you got a fucking problem. So yeah, so unacceptable. I know kids are going to do drugs. I know that. I know they're going to have sex too. You're not fooling me. I mean, you're talking to me. I don't know why they think I don't know this. I grew up at 14 in a strip club. I know what people do. The point is when it comes to my children, 
my children. I'm not going to encourage the behavior. So I stopped all the behavior in order to not participate in it so that I would set an example. I'm just saying. But you get critiqued for setting an example. I think tourmaline is one of the best. Anyway, when you're talking about mushrooms, mushrooms are a natural organic like peyote. No chemical, not like LSD. However, mushrooms, when you ingest them, they have their own entities in them. So when you ingest mushrooms, whether you smoke them, eat them, whatever it is you do with them, microdose them, I'm going to threaten to microdose LSD. But mushrooms have their own beings in them. So mushrooms are like of the earth. So they kind of talk about it like ayahuasca, like they'll take you on a journey. But see, here's the thing. It depends. A lot of people do it, but you don't know if they, it is an energetic work. Absolutely. Mushrooms are alive and they're a different being from outside of our atmosphere or dimension. So you're putting yourself into a different realm of being and the mushroom will take you on the trip. Just like ayahuasca, the, the, the Gaia, the earth mother takes you on the trip. Problem is if you vibrate differently than that substance, that can be a huge problem. As a, yeah, well, I, it's, not, it's not standards to say I don't want to bury another son from a cocaine overdose. I mean, that's not having standards. That's like fucking logical. We, we buried a child because he was a drug addict. Do I want to do that again? No, I buried one on a motorcycle. Do I encourage people to ride motorcycles? No. Do people ride motorcycles? Yes. But do I want them? It's not a high standard at all. It's a, it's, it's a mediocre standard to not encourage your children to do drugs and go against their mother who's sober. That's mediocrity. That's, that's this much. That's, that's no effort at all whatsoever. We know what kids are going to do. We know what kids are going to do. And John's argument is always, well, marijuana helps people on cancer with cancer. And I'm like, chaga, chaga tea. Yes. Chaga tea, chaga tea opens up the third eye. John's thing is always like, well, people, people smoke pot for cancer. Nine out of 10 times, the people dying of fentanyl taking opioids and yeah he's no role model I tried to role model it for my kids I did I did and I got mocked all the way along like a fucking joke okay for a joke for doing what society says they want you to do we don't want our kids if you have a meth head for a kid if you have a meth head for a kid do you want to encourage that so like if you don't do meth should we mock you I mean what the fuck is that these are Barbara's bracelets you see them so these are them, and this is, this is, uh, Mahana got me this, and I put Keithy's ashes and some opals in them, in these little braces. So, yeah, I earned my, yes, you earned, you, exactly, I earned the right because I had to deal with your drug-addicted son taking him out of the hospital after overdoses while I was pregnant with Keith. Why was that okay and acceptable? Why is that okay? Why will you not tell your other sons? My son did not know his brother died of an overdose because John refused to say that. Oh, they didn't find any drugs there. Well, what the hell did he keep ODing on then? Oh, it was an allergy and they made me look crazy and lied about me like I was lying, like I was crazy. I'm like, you weren't there. I buried the kid with his father. Like you weren't fucking there. I saw the dead body. Your dad had to run and find him on the ground dead. Ridiculous. I know, I know more. I know John just justifies drug use because he can't deal with his own addiction. And I'm saying that out loud, allegedly, your alcoholism. Anyway, when you have to bury somebody in your family and you just had a new baby and you have postpartum and that shit happens, it's devastating. It's devastating. It's devastating. So yes, I'm going to encourage my kids to live a sober life. Now, here's another reason to live a sober life. Not because it makes you better or worse. It doesn't allow the demons in you. You can sleep with people and get demons in you. You can have a surgery, cut off your meridians and have demons come with you, okay? It, like, come on to you. Not come with you, come on to you. <laughs> you can have all of that stuff happen. But if you are sober-minded, moderation in anything, if you have cancer, do your drugs. No one cares. Moderation is what I'm talking about. Keeping the body and three drinks for a woman every night at lunch or dinner is not moderation. Moderation is fine. Even if you smoke a cigarette once a year, 
once every three months, whatever. That's moderation, okay? So when you're looking at people who are not sober-minded, they are not able to see the reality that is in front of them. Drugs put you into a delusional state. You are not thinking clearly. Hence the meth addicts that try to get away from the police in a high-speed chase by stopping the car with the helicopters above them and going on foot with a big spotlight. They're like, I'm going to hide from these cops. No, you're not, crazy pants. No, you're not. That's the drug talking and you are not sober-minded. When you are sober-minded, yes, the mental illness and the demons, it's horrible. It's a portal. When you are sober-minded, you can see people's intention and the reality. You don't waste your time. It is a superpower and they fucking mock you. They mock you. It's not okay to mock sober people. Why do we have such a high tolerance? Because you're a bitch ass, smoking cigarettes, drinking your booze, fucking passing out from your meth. No, they don't pass out from that. From your fentanyl and then doing your meth and speed bump. Why are you okay? Oh, well, they were drunk. Oh, well, they were on meth. Oh, she's a sober bitch. What is that? Reverse world, the demons, the devil, the beast system does not want you to catch on. So they want to ply you full of shit. Obviously, if you have a terminal illness, you should take whatever you seem, whatever you need to be better, right? You should do whatever you need to do to be healthy. But if you're talking about people in school and they're doing opioids and there's nothing wrong with them, they haven't had their tooth pulled, no one ran over their foot, what are they doing? What are they doing? They are leaving their physical body out of their physical body. They are out of their physical body. If you are out of your physical body, how do you know who's coming into your physical body? And how do you even know they coexist? You can see it in the eyes. You can see it with how they speak. You can see it in the rage that they have. They are coexisting with something. So they lose little minutes of time. They do things that they wouldn't normally do. Like, oh, I think I'll fuck that guy, that homeless guy over there. It's not something they would normally do. They find themselves eating poorly. They do, you know, they take more risks. This is what happens when you're coexisting with something in your body. That's a huge problem. And people think, oh, it's just, they're dumb. We do not educate our society on what happens when you tune out of your physical body. We do not educate. We don't educate. Why do you think you say bless you when you sneeze? Because when you sneeze, you're out of your body, right? Oh my God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But see, people walk around and they're just vicious. They're vicious. Their faces are all like this. They say shitty things on a daily. They're horrible people. They are entitled people and they're all high, right? They're all high. So, I mean, I'm talking about the people that are high. Look at a meth person running down the street after their trailer explodes. Their face is all contorted and they're all, it's just, if you can't see that, I don't know how to help you. Look at a heroin addict that will shoot up and shoot up and shoot up and even stick it in their eyeballs, under their tongue and under their toenails to get high. Look at that shit. Why are they doing that? Who is encouraged? They've lost their freedom. They're total slaves. That is such a good point. Oh my God, who said that? I can't see your name, but you know, they've, they're total slaves. They are a bitch to the demon. They are total slaves. They are not free. They can, and then here's the other argument. Well, you're an exercise addict. Yes, yes, because exercise kills people when you do it every day. No, no, and no. I'm building my endorphins, clearing my energy outside in nature. But yes, addiction is in many forms, but I'm talking about litter and getting sun. I'm literally talking, you can talk about addiction in many forms. Marriage is an addiction because you think you need a man to pay your bills. Addiction. Or you think you need a woman to fuck every night in your bed. Addiction. Absolutely. Absolutely. Coffee, sugar, burritos, tacos, purses, shopping, shoes, makeup, glasses, whatever you want to say. But we are talking about portals that literally open up Swiss cheese in your body 
okay? Swiss cheese in your body so that you can have entities coexisting. And you know it's, you're trying to justify it. There are addictions in many, but we're talking about the ones that, do you know more people died? Oh, alcoholism is disgusting. Do you know more people died of fentanyl since the beginning of the pandemic than anybody died of the pandemic? Where the hell, why are we not talking about that? Chocolate, definitely. Why are we not, or when you're sober, they still, yes, exactly. Why are we not talking about fentanyl addiction? It, it brings holes in, I'm telling you, it brings holes. It literally brings holes. Well, meth makes you like Swiss cheese. So if you were to actually see a person's, I used to work in a bar because John owned a bar. I was sober. I stopped working there because I said, if I have to spend my life doing your work in restaurants and bars, I'd rather stab myself straight in the eye with a pitchfork because it's not for me. So when I was in the bar, I noticed two things. People that had a multitude of addictions, whatever it was, like alcohol and maybe they're doing heroin outside. There were a lot of heroin addicts, a lot of meth addicts, a lot of crack addicts, whatever. Redneck bar. Anyhow, they would come in to the bar and when you looked at their energy field, because I could, I was in my early, I was, I was 21 or two, 21 or two. John put me to work in his bars and restaurants. It was okay though. He wanted to get me out of stripping. I should have stayed in stripping. At least I had control over myself. Anyhow, when they came into the bars and they were on something, I remember seeing this one kid, probably my age, whatever, at the time, and he had like a Christmas tree, so prickly edges coming out of his energy field, much wider at the bottom. So the so from the waist down, it was like a Christmas tree. And then from here up, it was more, it was literally spiky like a Christmas tree. This was his way of keeping people away. I could actually see it. I could see other people in the bar with the rage, sexual issues on their nose. Their nose would get all red, sexual issues. I could see um, there were people in there that were pregnant and drinking and shooting up in the bathroom that I had to kick out. I'm like, you cannot come in this bathroom and shoot up your like seven months pregnant. If that's not demonic and don't tell me it's an addiction, um, they shoot poison into their veins. Come into the bathroom. If you, uh, well, a vaccine is poison in your veins. Putting someone's sperm in your body is poison in your body, okay? Sucking dick and having them do it in your mouth is poison in your body if you don't know who it is. So let's look at it that way. But anyway, there were girls in the bathroom, this girl in the bathroom, like eight months pregnant and literally walked in there. She's shooting up pregnant. And I'm like, you have to get out. And I told you guys, she came back and literally came back and asked me to help her get custody of her child, which I felt very bad for her. But it's, if that's not demonic, you're eight months pregnant and you're doing heroin in the bathroom while grabbing a drink on your way out the door. If that is not preg uh, pregnant, if that is not demonic, I don't know what it is. I saw that firsthand and I threw her right out. I'm like, you can't do this. And she came back and asked me for help to get her child back. Her child was born addicted. Do you know how hard that is on a baby? That is the cycle of Satanism. Because if you do that while you're pregnant, and then you bring your child in addicted, your child is going to want to do drugs because they're always going to remember that. What are you doing? That's demonic. And if you think I'm crazy, that happens all the time. There are people that drink and they cause problems with their babies while they drink alcohol fetal uh, syndrome. There's all kinds of things. Okay. There's all kinds of things. There's Bill Clinton and his ruby red nose. Bill Clinton, that's a sexual issue right there. When that's true, the nose rules your genitalia on the body. So this right here is a Scorpio ruled region of the face. Aries rules the forehead, but this is a Scorpio. Your hoochie's Scorpio too. Your boobies are cancer, but if you have boobies. Well, I guess men have boobies, so whatever. But this is Scorpio. So when this is out of whack, there's out of whack with the sex organs area. That's one way to look at it. Okay, that's one way to look at it. What What is there? Yeah, I owned a bar. I mean, through marriage, I owned a bar. But it's a very, I mean, if you're in a bar, you're also a, a drinker's nose. Yeah, but most people in active addiction, most people in active addiction, okay, are dealing with trauma. Addiction is trauma. Movies for the man boobies. Addiction is trauma. 
Addiction is trauma. It's not blood addiction. I don't believe. This is my opinion. I don't believe it. Again, Dr. Drew and I have this conversation. I literally don't believe that addiction is caused by your gene pool. I believe it's a generational curse generational curse from the energy of your ancestors that lived in the house before you. And if nobody has broken that chain, okay, of negative addiction and they continue to hide and they don't deal with their shit and they give birth, they're going to pass that energy on. And then the trauma is going to happen. The trauma happens because the parents or caretakers or whoever have not dealt with their own issues. I am guilty of that as well. So that's actually why it happens. So it's an ancestral curse. It is Trump. Pisces rules the feet and the blood. So when you get sepsis, your feet, sensitive feet, Pisces, blood, Pisces. Those are Pisces areas. Yeah. So yeah, they avoid reality. They can't handle reality. A sober mindset shows you reality. Once you see reality, you like, I know my son died. I saw him on the ground. There's nothing you can show me in this world that's going to be any more offensive than that. So once you deal with reality sober, you deal with it sober. Once you see it, there's nothing anybody can do to you. They cannot do anything to you. That's the point. If you're drunk, they can set you up, blackmail you, blame you, scapegoat you, do all kinds of things. If you're high, they can do the same things. And energetically, in both instances, they can get into your body and you can be coexisting with an entity that you're too fucking stupid to know because you're drinking every day or you're smoking weed all day long. You're a dumbass weed smoker all fucking day long and you don't even know what's attached to you. That's how ignorant you are because you believe in the 3D. So people got to be sensitive to that. Um, so you have to be sensitive to that. Yeah, no, I know, right? No one's, full. it's like, I can see what you're doing. You don't fool me. And when you hear people drunk talk, oh my God, I'm like, shut up. Sagittarius rules the hips and the top of the thigh. Sagittarius rules the hips and the top of the thigh. So you have to watch. You really have to watch what you allow in your body. Food can be used. Food can be used as much like heroin, to be an addiction and food's acceptable because food is everywhere. Everybody goes everywhere to eat, right? I'm going to go eat some of this. I'm going to go eat some of that. So it's very, very, um, oh, hold on one second. Okay. Hold on one sec. I've got a lawyer meeting after this. Bobby, I'm on schedule. He wants to know, um, okay, wait, wait, wait. Um, okay. If you want Oh my God. <sighs> What's tomorrow, Tuesday? Okay, um, 3 p.m. I'm so close to the deadline. And it needs, hold on, <laughs> needs to be filed filed by Friday has to be okay hold on a second here sorry you guys I have to answer him because he's a lawyer Bobby knows what I'm talking about and I just got blurry looking up from there and gave myself a headache um, okay I can't okay Sorry, you guys. One second. One second. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. There. Um, he needs to send me something. Okay. So when you're looking at everything, that, see, if people had a brain during the pandemic, they wouldn't have let the government do this. Here's another thing. Here's the gut. Sugar is completely addictive. They put sugar in everything in order to fuck with you. You know that, right? They, they're no obesity. Oh, obesity. Yeah, really, quite frankly, if you're going to tell me I have to wear a mask and I can't exercise, then you're going to need to get rid of McDonald's because it's not really food. It's not really fucking food, okay? McDonald's, Taco Bell, uh, Del Taco, those are not foods. Those are crap, sugar and salt put together, crushed like this, and it's designed to fuck with you. Chick-fil-A, all of I don't eat any of that shit. I just, I mean, I have eaten it, but... 
Phantom Foods, and it's designed to make you sick. It's designed to make you sick. Orangeville, Ontario. Orangeville, I remember it so well. The hardware store. In Orangeville, Ontario. Uh, I hate sugar and bread. I don't eat bread. I eat bites of bread. Filler foods, exactly. It's not food you're not feeding. If you're, this is what they do to people in jail. If they give you a bunch of food in jail, like they give you bologna sandwiches and whatever they give you. This is why I can't go to jail. I would probably be more criminal if I thought I could handle it in jail, but I'm here to say I can't. They give you all kinds of shitty food. Honey is too, honey, yes, honey is good, excuse me, but honey is full and raises the blood sugar level. So honey just makes you crave sugar as well. Too much fruit makes you crave more fruit. But here's the thing. In jail, they feed the criminal components, Nova Scotia, Canada. They've, they've probably monk fruits. Look up the glycemic, um, glycemic manuka honey is really good from the area. Uh, honey and peanut butter sandwich, probably one of the most pure foods you can eat. As far as electrolytes for exercise, probably one of the most pure foods you can eat. But here's the thing. When they put people in jail and they tell you it's about uh, rehabilitation, it's not about rehabilitation. What it's about is actual experimentations on people for what they can eat and what they can't. Yeah, peanut butter and jelly, so good. Um, I lost quite a bit of weight this past year. Good for you, good for you, good for you. Yeah, no, honey's delicious, but it still will raise your 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 glycemic index with honey. Like it's straight up, but honey's delicious. It's a form of sugar. It's a natural form of sugar. So is fruit. But what we're, yes, it is. But what's happening now, I think with these portals opening, we're going to find something completely and literally, um, hi, Eric, how are you? We're going to find something completely um, financially problematic in this world. And I think that that's going to happen. So yeah, it's, it's not, let's see. Oh, the veil is so thin. I can see, I can see, I lost weight. No, Bobby, you look Bobby silly. Bobby's straight up silly. She looks so cute. Shush. Shh. Lucas cooks good food for her. He makes fat free. He makes sugar free things. So good. Um, yes, her husband's homemade ice cream. Strawberry. I hear about it. I'm like, I wish I was there. I'd be jogging over. I'd have to jog though, so I could justify eating it and then jog home. Um, <laughs> I'm having fun over here. But anyway, that's, you know, that's kind of what's been going on in the world. So that's the portal. And now I think I'm done. But here's what I want you guys to practice. If you want to be really powerful in your life, and I know I'm going to get flack for this because everybody thinks they should go out and smoke their weed, drink their booze, fuck a random neighbor, whatever. And you can go do all of that. That's awesome. But in order to elevate yourself, powdered vanilla bean, delicious. In order to elevate yourself, you actually have to be grounded in the physical. Um, okay, not that I eat this, but I just found out. Subway bread, yes, it's pastry. They put way too much sugar. Yeah, I, I totally, and little kids love Subway. Mm, yummy Subway. I used to eat Subway when they put the plastic in it. I was partial to the plastic, and I do drink Diet Coke when I go out, which is a total chemical. But, okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing, y'all. Um, my neighbor is so handsome. Here's the thing. Okay. In order. Hi, Anthony. How is it in Toronto? Good. Okay. So here's the thing. In order to stay congruent with the energy and to actually understand, you have to be on guard. We are in the middle of a spiritual war. Go back to Vietnam and think of people high and drunk running through the jungle, trying to protect each other. Probably not going to work. We want the platoon head guy to be sober and to be aware of his surroundings. You are in a spiritual war. During the pandemic, people listened to the government and they put on fake masks that do not work. It says so on the package. And they wore these masks outside like idiots. And then the shopping stores said, you have to wear the mask. You have to do this. You have to do that. That's what we lived with. And people did it. They're going to bring it back. And you're going to have to say no, especially Los Angeles County. They're going to bring it back and you're going to have to say no. You get to choose how you live. They do not get to choose, but they're trying to choose. So that's what I'm saying. Okay. 
I now have to run again. All right, y'all. Peace out. Peace out, everybody. Not me. I said no. That's right. I, not me. I said no. Yes, they're trying. Yes, they're trying to start. L.A. County is doing that again. I'm not doing it. You're going to have to arrest me. I'm going to tell them you're going to need to arrest me. I'm not doing this. People should vote these people out, okay? Um, they should vote these people out. You have to vote these fucking people out. You have to vote them out. Monkeypox is bullshit. This is bullshit. You know, like in the way that they unleashed it in society. So they tell you there's a virus that they purposely put into society to make everybody fucked up. That's what they do. Yeah. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Peace out, y'all. Peace out. Okay. Peace out. I will see you guys soon. Remember, if you're telling your story about abuse yourself, it's not slander and it's not defamation. It's your life experience and you get to say it. If you get to say shitty things to me in my life and be a fucking chaos causing piece of shit, then I get to say about the chaos that you caused me in my life through your verbal actions, through your words, through your misdeeds, through shit that I deem as seedy in just in my experience with you. So if you're going to be around me, please don't act up because I'm going to have to speak it now every single time and you're not going to like it. So don't do it. Don't do it. Apologize, take responsibility and don't fucking do it again. I'm just saying that's to people in my life. Okay. Not to you guys, except for the guy that's a pervert on here. Okay. Bye you guys. <laughs> bye you guys.